Welcome on our bee adventure. Today we are way, way out in the country in Texas and it is late winter and we've got this magnificent old barn and we have some trespassing honeybees. So we're going to remove those utilizing the Daydant vacuum system and this is what we call a grumpy bee removal system by Mr. Dwayne Cleveland of Glen Rose, Texas. Join with us today as we catch, contain, split, remove, and relocate these honeybees. And this is a good thing that we're doing as they continue to pollinate those crops and make that wonderful, wonderful honey. But I want you to notice one thing about this old barn. I had not seen for many, many years a lightning arrestor, a lightning rod it was called, and these day back a long way but here is a great example. Let's look at the components of the Dedant vacuum system. Here we see the vacuum box, and that's kind of where all the action takes place. In the vacuum box, uh, there is a catch box that goes on the inside and that's what actually catches the bees. On each end of the catch box is a fitting that allows, in this particular case, the one you're looking at, the vacuum suction from the vacuum motor, and then on the other end is the uh, uh, place for the uh, hose that, that actually sucks the bees into the vacuum box. Here you see the vacuum box is actually empty. We do not have a, yet have a catch box. Here is a catch box and that catch box has wire sides. It has a, the big hole which goes toward the red hose uh, that feeds into the vacuum box allows the bees to come through this. And then of course the wire allows for uh, the bees to get plenty of air in addition to allowing for the vacuum to pull, pull the bees into that box. And uh, we can put about up to four pounds of bees in a particular uh, catch box. It's a good idea to have multiples. Here you see the uh, catch box installed in the vacuum box. Notice that it has straps and this is for easy removal uh, because uh, we just might get a, a large colony and need multiple catch boxes and we might intentionally want to do a split. In that case it's really easy to remove a catch box and install another catch box and then we're uh, good to go. And we can put those uh, into two different hive bodies. Now we use a, a little very inexpensive uh, uh, vacuum motor here which fits over a standard uh, five gallon plastic bucket. Here you see Mr. Uh, Dwayne Cleveland who, who invented this entire system uh, checking his vacuum motor and here he's telling you about it. It's a one and a half horsepower uh, vacuum motor and we had so much wind noise that we're having to do a voice override and there's a one inch hose and again that's going to go uh, in one end into the vacuum system and one end into the vacuum box and uh, he's showing you had a little tape in there to make it make the seal really good now he's got an adapter for the one inch if you remove that adapter and you start to screw it then you'll have the capability of putting a two inch uh, hose as a suction uh, from a shop vac and so two inch or one inch either will work. Here he shows his ad adaptation to allow a little bit of air to go into the uh, five gallon bucket and reduce the amount of vacuum that this system is pulling and that's kind of important because we want those bees to have kind of a nice ride down that hose into the catch box and we don't want them to be zooming in there at jet speeds and and hitting up against the wall and hurting the bees we just want them to to enjoy being picked up now here he's going to talk to you a little bit about uh, about this gasket that's on top when you store your box store it with the latch open because Otherwise, this gasket could get compressed to the point where you would not have a great seal. In that case, you're not simply not going to have enough vacuum uh, to pull the bees in. So, so just store your store your uh, uh, vacuum box with with the catch box open, and you'll be in just great shape. All right, let's get her going here now.
Okay, you can see that Dwayne has that uh, vacuum box set up, and that's a Dwayne Cleveland uh, Grumpy Bee removal system, we call it. But uh, I guess you could call it the Day Dad system, since you can get it from Day Dad Beekeeper Supplies. And what he's done is place his uh, uh, source vacuum machine a, a little ways away from, from where we're working on the bees. And then he hooks the, the one inch to, to that, that's the suction. And then the red hose goes to a two inch. And, and that makes it more gentle on the bees because the, the two inch hose is not only a bigger diameter, slows down the velocity, but it also, the inside of that, as smooth as it can be. It's not corrugated like the outside. And that makes it for a nice trip for the bees between the vacuum and the catch box. It's gonna go right through that wood. I'm not gonna pull it off right now. I'm gonna go. They are after that camera. They're after me too, come to think of it. These are these are a little more aggressive. These must, must have a different queen in here. We got some bees that are upset here. They're far more aggressive than the earlier colony was. But old Greg's going to smoke them up a little bit. See if they like that smoke. He's about to remove the board. We're going to see if there's any bees behind that board. What do you think, Greg? Is there going to be any bees back there? Oh, a few. A few, he said. Oh, yeah. I think so. I'm seeing quite a bit. Wow. I'd hate to think if we didn't have a bee, uh, bee vacuum, we'd be in trouble, wouldn't we? I believe we would be. What's back in? What's back there? Do you what? You get a picture of that all the way up and down? No, you want me to get a picture all the way up and down? Yeah. Greg, step back just a minute. Let him get right around. Come let, right me, right let me zero that in a little tighter. Because I can tell you what, I'm getting hit by these bees, but I'm going to just pan that up and down until they go through this latex glove and then I'm going to sling this camera all over the place. Yeah, now it's nice and uh, nice and white down there at the bottom, isn't it? There's not hardly any honey in it. Not, he, that's what Greg said. He said we don't it's have... A, not very good quality. Let's, let's do that. Out. Let me tighten up real tight and go up that one more time. Greg, I know I'm holding you up, but... Oh, you're not holding me up yet. That's what we're doing. Oh, yeah. Man, that's that's a nice long. How, why, how, what, how, what length would you estimate that? Five, five foot. Five feet. Every one of them, five Pretty feet. Good. He five foot four. <laughs> you ever what we're doing is checking 
how much vacuum they have. You really want a pretty gentle vacuum because otherwise when those bees come sailing through that hose, they really could be hurt when they hit the end of that catch box. So you're, you, because you want to remove the bees, you're going to feel like you want a lot of vacuum. But the truth is you need, need a very gentle vacuum. Greg begins by vacuuming the bees off of the boards that we took off. Notice how they're going right into that uh, hose and uh, they're taking that trip down that smooth inside that hose down to the catch box. And he does a great job of that. I think he's a specialist. Every once in a while he's going to close the end of that vacuum, put a little extra suction on it, make sure it gets any bees that might be in there. And they're going into that catch box. And usually you need more than one catch box on a pretty good sized colony. Uh, each catch box Uh, Dwayne Cleveland has added a couple other things to the scene. One is that uh, uh, five gallon bucket with, with a nice uh, uh, trash sack in it and that is for uh, containing these scraps, the inevitable scraps that are, that are going to be left over from taking the uh, comb out. And the, uh, this would be the old uh, comb that's, that's not any good or perhaps even diseased. The other box is going to be a rectangular box with a nice cover and that is just in case we happen to find some great honey out here and we want to save it into that box and of course you want a cover on it to uh, protect it from from more bees getting into it i think he's probably opening opening that box up right now i saw him slip that comb in there he probably won't tell us about it though has placed three wires behind a full high body frame and also, he is now uh, cutting out some brood. He probably cut out some, some honey also. And he's placing that in the frame. And he will wire it in the frame. And that will go into their, their new home. So they'll have some brood to start with. But it also obviously attracts the bees into their new home. And it's a good thing to do. Did you say something, Dwayne? Yeah, they got both honey and brood, so they'll have something to start them out with. Now, very frankly, we will also frequently go ahead and feed them uh, sugar water when we first set them out in their new home. Like Notice he went ahead and put that in the hive body because uh, he'll put several of these in the hive body uh, so that it'll already be in there when he puts the uh, catch box on top of the hive body and uh, the bees will want to go down to where that brood and where that honey is so they'll just go move right down from that catch box down into the uh, to the hive. Now I know some people do it a little differently. They, they probably uh, uh, let the bees go in from the front entrance. but. Uh, we found this works just very well. Okay, Dwayne has cut the vacuum off and they removed that one inch suction hose and he probably has a board in his uh, a hand and I suspect he's going to use that to close off the big hole in the catch box. Would that be about right, Dwayne? That's right. He's going to move it back just a little bit and look at him slip that board down in there. Watch this catch box come out. Oh my goodness. Got, got, got it covered up. You got bees? Why don't we get those? Yeah, my goodness. 
Need Let's to... see if you can get a close up. That's probably about two pounds. Probably about two pounds. And we're going to find out here in a minute. I'm rolling. <laughs> that's that's weighs seven pounds, so we got three pounds of bees in that box. The box weighs four pounds. That's a pretty good little peck of bees right there. That's right. We we took a, took a picture of that a while ago. We kind of expected that, that that's what you were going to do, is okay, so weigh those bees. Right here, we're going to leave this metal frame out. This large, cold, size box. We're going to go right on top of it right there. That's just an inner cover with a large, round hole, and instead of a an oblong hole for a, a bee escape device, right? That's right. That's a three inch hole, not just no big deal. It's a three inch hole, but you know, whatever. Now watch him. He's going to turn that catch box upside down. And he's got it on top of that inner cover with a hole. And watch him. He's going to pull that board out, I'll bet, that's blocking the hole in the catch box. And those bees now can go down in that hive and they can look for that brood and they could look for that honey and that that uh, foundation there's a little extra foundation in there so they can oh man they're going to have a good time now what we do is uh, simply strap use use these uh, wonderful nylon straps to strap that catch box and notice we have the uh, entrance to the the uh, hive box closed with screen wire and we're actually going to move these bees with that that strapped in there relocated bees. Uh, these were pulled out of a barn yesterday and uh, this morning well we've just left the uh, catch boxes on top and these bees are, are uh, acclimating themselves to their new home and and they're gonna go from grumpy bees to happy bees we hope and boy did I bring in that zoom but you can see Mr. Dwayne Cleveland in the background there and he's gonna work these bees and, and probably get those uh, catch boxes off and uh, get ready to get these bees into production. Now I have to tell you, it's still March uh, in this area, so it's a little early. It's, it's, uh, uh, we would normally do this type of relocation uh, a little bit later, so we've got some, some different uh, uh, procedures as far as the amount of honey and the amount of frames. Actually, about four frames is sufficient uh, to, to uh, get these bees started. Four frames of brood and honey, and. And we probably have as many as seven in this one. So as you see, uh, we open them up. Well, we will uh, uh, have a little more than we would if it was a little bit later in the season. But we believe they're going to they're going to get going well, and uh, they'll do very well in the in this area. Now, what he's going to do is take the catch box off, and he probably before we leave today, he'll just put it with the hole up in front of the hive, and uh, the rest of the bees that a few of them that happen to be staying in the catch box, uh, they'll, they'll come out of that and they'll go into the hive because they, they're now acclimated to this new hive. Notice that he has slipped in a, an in, in hive feeder and uh, by the way uh, this has been modified to have some some uh, screen wire in it that the bees can climb out of it. Uh, we know that they're manufactured with a kind of a groove and that's supposed to work, but we have found that putting a uh, one eighth inch screen wire inside uh, helps the bees uh, avoid drowning to a much greater extent. So here comes a feeder here and uh, you're getting too close to me there. Oh, so uh, let me see where you are there. Yep, uh, let me zero in on that, and uh, here you can, I've got bees bothering me pretty bad here, so I'm having to, you can see that we've done a wooden insert, and tied to that is one eighth inch uh, 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 screen wire, which, which allows the bees to climb out of the, of the feeder real well. Yeah, they're getting kind of frisky and trying to, trying to bite me, I think. Yeah, they ate 
ahead and some of this sugar water out here to make it easier to handle. You will notice that uh, uh, Dwayne Cleveland has put a hole in the top of his air cover and he's using a funnel. Now that goes down into that in uh, hive feeder and he's pouring a, a mixture of one to one sugar and water and, and of course you heat your water first get it nice and hot and uh, I frankly prefer to, to boil it and then let it cool down but I think each person has their own way of, of doing that. But but that hole, the little round hole in the cover and the inner, inner cover, uh, because he's got his feeder on the extreme outside of all the other uh, frames, it works pure well. You get ready to refill? And he can refill by simply uh, moving the uh, outer cover over a little bit, and you see him placing the funnel in there now, and it just works real well, and you, it's minimum disruption of the bees' lives. And, and what you want is for them out there making making some more honey. All right, we see some smoke coming up here now. What's happening? Well, we're fixing to open this other hive up on the hive. He says, he says we're gonna open up another hive. And then we picked up two, two colonies yesterday at that old barn. And you know what? One of those was just about big enough to have done a split. And that's one of the advantages of having this Daydant uh, vacuum system because a lot of times you can get enough bees to, to actually split it into, you get uh, one big colony. And uh, hold on just a second. He wants me to come in and zero in on this, uh, this brood. And uh, let's see if we can zero in real tight on that. Hold that there just a second. And uh, we're going to get a good shot of it. And then I'm going to back off of it a little bit. Uh, we'll get real arty here. Got it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's full of brood just about it, or at least a whole bunch of it was. Now you notice he still has wire because we got this brood out of the, uh, out of the barn and uh, we showed you some of, those, uh, some of those combs that were literally five feet long or wide or however you want to call it. Uh, well, he's going to show me something else here. Pure honey right there. Pure honey. All right, hold it there for still for a second. Let me zero in kind of tight on that. Now that's capped honey, and that'd be good stuff, but I think it's also good stuff for the bees. Is that not true? That's, that's good. They need something to eat also. And of course it is still, still late winter here, so the bees definitely need some honey to, to make sure that they don't starve as they're doing their spring buildup, because that could easily happen. Now once again, he has a little round hole in his inner cover, and so he's probably going to put that funnel in there and pour that sugar water. One to one mixture of sugar water, one, one uh, and this is by volume, uh, about a one to one mixture. What we find in practice is about four pounds of sugar per gallon of water. Uh, works kind of nice for, for spring feeding. Now in the fall feeding, some people feed a uh, uh, more sugar in their mixture, uh, up to two to one, but in spring feeding, we really have found that a one to one mixture works just great. Take these big covers off, we'll reuse them for another bee removal. So we got to go back and put the inner cover, regular inner cover on them, take these off, we'll have them for tomorrow to do another big bee job on them with them. And that's what he's talking about is the 3 inch circle at the top of the inner cover. And of course that is so that the, when the catch boxes are turned upside down, uh, the bees can go into the, uh, their brand new home through that uh, big hole in the inner cover. 